making your sound better. Now let's talk about Studio One setup and configuration. Let's start with the general settings. So where we can go is we can navigate here on Studio One menu. And right at the very bottom, you can see these options right here. You can click that and there you go. These are all the settings that you can tweak in order for you to change and customize Studio One. So under this general settings, we have the appearance. We have our keyboard shortcuts. We have our network right here. So let's go with the general. So here on the general set, general settings, you can choose to make Studio One do something for you the next time you open it. So right now we we are on do nothing, which means that Studio One will open on its default um, its default window once we open it. Therefore, we can add a project manually. We can change our time signature. We can change the duration. We can change how the grid works, and you can also choose to make choose to make studio one start a new song the next time you open it or maybe you want to open your last session or your last project that you've worked on in studio one the next time you open it and then you can choose this open last song slash project you can also change the language if you want for example if you're from if you're if you speak dutch or you're from spain or if you're from france italy or brazil japan you can choose to uh, change your language right here. Also, you can change your um, window settings, your DPI settings. It's basically um, how huge the screen will look like on a 4K monitor, for example, or from uh, for a 1080p monitor. In this case, I do have a 1080p, so my scaling is just 100%. And if you want to tweak this, Studio One will require you to start restart the software in order for this to work. So let's just go for the no as of now. The next one is the appearance. Of course, it's obvious. Appearance will, the appearance settings will obviously change the way Studio One looks right there. If you want your interface to look yellowish and then you can just adjust that. You can adjust the arrangement window right there. As you can see, it turns white you can also type in the value right here. And take note that if you type in negative, then the cursor right here will move to the left. And if you type in a positive, let's say positive value, then the cursor will move to the right. And you can also store your preset. In this case, I have a bunch of preset on my own right here. And you can Customize your own depending on your taste. So the next one is our keyboard shortcuts. Let's just use the default for now so you guys won't get confused. So let's go for the keyboard shortcuts. You can also change your shortcuts here. For example, your split. Right now, as of the moment, we don't have any shortcut for the split. So we can you can add a key, for example. For the split, I want... Um, I want to press F and as you can see right now it's it has a conflict because the F is assigned to the edit auto scroll so we have to find another one maybe control F there you go so what you can do is you can assign that press OK and apply and the cool thing about this software is that you can migrate from other DOS easily for example you you have you're from logic or you're from pro tools cakewalk you can map all the keyboard shortcut scheme using these shortcuts because those dots are pretty pretty similar to studio one they function similarly you can add tracks unlike fl studio once you add a certain element then that plugin will go to or that sam sample will go to the uh window that we call the channel rack um, whereas some conventional DOS such as Studio One, Cubase, Logic um, uh, performs differently. Once you add a certain element, then you it will automatically automatically add a new mixer track, and there you have it. You can now mix on the go. The next one is our location settings. So under our location settings, we have our user data, we have our file types, we have our sound sets. 
instrument library and our VST plugins. So right now, as of the moment, we didn't install any sound sets and instrument library from PreSonus, but the idea is that once you install it, and it, it, will, it will automatically be saved in this directory right here. And for the instrument library, it will go to this directory right here. So you can just go there, you can go to their website, you can download that for free even if you don't have a Studio One um, professional license, you can still download that for free. So let's go with the user data. The user data is where we can customize our own folder. So basically my folder is right here. If I, if I save a certain preset, let's say I want to save a certain preset for my compressor or for my mixer or let's say mastering preset it will automatically be saved here right and same goes with the project files if i create a new project then the, that project file will be saved here under this folder and if i record an audio for example i have a recording session for a certain song and all of the audio files that we recorded on inside studio one will be directed to that folder. Always remember to check this auto save document so you'll, your project files will stay updated. So the file types. So the file types are basically the, all the file types that Studio One supports. For example, this NKI. So as we all know, NKI is from Contact and Studio One supports Contact. So it was included on the list. And our VSD plugins right here is where we can add our VSD folders, right? So by default, we have these two folders right here because these two folders right here are the default folder. And once you install a certain plugin, a new plugin, it could either be a plugin from Waves, FabFilter, WA Productions, it will automatically be directed on this directory unless you change it. So if you have if you have your own custom directory folder, then you can just add that and you can just remove the ones that you don't need. Another tip is that always click this can at startup once you install a new plugin. So Studio One will um will scan all your plugins and it will detect that new plugin and will be placed on your browser. And you can just deactivate this once you're done. The next one is our audio setup or our audio settings. So under our audio settings, we can change our audio drivers, right? For example, I do have a bunch of audio drivers. I do have an SCU for all for a low latency. I do have a Focusrite USB and an M Audio M track at home. So that's why I do have this two audio, audio drivers and of course the built-in Windows audio. So right here, we have this control panel. We can edit our input and we can edit our output as well. And you can change your sample rate, your input latency here, your output latency and so on. And under the song setup here on the audio setup, you can, uh, you can customize your own input and out inputs and outputs. As you can see right there, you can add mono, you can add stereo. And the last one is our external devices right here. So under the external devices settings, we can add our MIDI keyboard, or maybe we can add a control surface if we have. So as of the moment, I don't have my control surface, but I can show you how you can add a new instrument. But we have, we also have a bunch of options here. For example, you have an M audio, um, keyboard, let's say for example, Oxygen 8, you can just click this and there you go. That's how easy it is because Studio One is in partnership with all of these companies right here that is listed. So my keyboard is different. So I'll just go with the new keyboard right here. So you hover over the receive from and right now I'm using a world easy key keyboard. So I'll just click this and I'll, na I'll rename it. MIDI and if I click OK if I press my MIDI keyboard you can see here that it's functioning right here at the bottom bam 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 so let's try it out let's add an instrument let's say a piano let's 
taking up a while. Oops, where's my piano? Right there. So right now, it's working. 